at that point, that's when I kind of had that feeling like I don't want to do this anymore. Um, that I don't think real estate is for me. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm not like a, a salesy, salesy person, but I know what I do and I know it very well. But so I kind of got to feel like maybe real estate is not for me. Maybe I should just go to like a corporate world. But then I kind of had that mindset like, you know, this, you can't quit. You have to keep doing what you want to do and keep pushing. Welcome to Let's Talk Real with Mel. We are here with Daryl Williams, realtor with Compass. Yes. Uh, out of Manhattan, New York, mostly Manhattan and Brooklyn, I think. Yeah, Manhattan and Brooklyn, yes. All right, tell us a little bit about your, your how you got started and a little bit about your business. Um, yeah, so originally from Philadelphia, born and raised. I moved to New York City about um, 12 years ago or so, around 2011. Um, my grandparents are real estate here in Philly. I've always been around the business. That's uh, always intrigued by property, helping them out and helping them get their business to another level. And then when I moved to New York, um, I was intrigued by New York City real estate. It's New York City. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into the business around 20, 2012, end of 2012, beginning in 2013. And ever since then, I've just been moving my way up in the business. Um, I just took the initiative to learn all of New York City. That's, that's my goal. I'm not from there. So I wanted to learn every single neighborhood, every single pricing point, every single property type and that's what i take my uh pride into into mm -hmm. my into my business and into my clients so being serious about it no, yes. be, this is a no, career it's my career i'm going to school for economics so you know it's not fully into what real estate is but you know that background with numbers and learning the markets and not understand how you know real estate works i think helps my business okay where'd you go to school penn state I went to Penn State. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Lindy Lyon. Yes. yes. Big wrestling school. Yes. Rex wrestling. Football. football. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Big wrestling school. Yep. So, um, okay. So we went to Penn State, a econ major, mm -hmm. um, and then now we're in real estate. Kind of still, it's connected. Yes. It's connected. So I mean, it's yeah, yeah. It's connected. Mm -hmm. Um, and then now when you, you know, out of the gate in, in, you know, 2012, 2013. Did you, were you, did you come out like full time in real estate? Or? Uh, I did full time. I started a very small firm. Uh, I was about. Probably no more than 20 people at the firm. Um, I worked there for almost seven or eight years. And then I went to another company. And then I joined Compass in 2021. Um, in the small firm, it was a learning curve because I didn't really have the support that a bigger company has. But took the initiative and did a lot of the late work that some people may not want to do in, in business if not working at a big company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had, some, I had a mentor to help me out when I joined that company. That's to tell me to learn different buildings, learn different neighborhoods, um, learn different price points. Don't have people come to you if you're a New York City broker and not know the pricing of a neighborhood in Brooklyn or pricing in Manhattan. I just I wanted to be a New York City broker, not just a certain neighborhood in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was that was a pride that I took into. And I think that has helped my business elevate. So it took a lot of study. Yes, it did. Yeah, New York City had a lot of neighborhoods. People may know. And but people. And a few people, yes, right. yes, and eight million people, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. So, um, would you say that your your academic background, because obviously you didn't just like stumble into Penn State, you know, no. there was a, yeah. there were some academic requirements to even make you eligible to attend that. University. Yes, um, would you say that 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 same studious mentality, just basically, you just took that same and carried it straight over to. Uh, in the neighborhoods? Yeah, I would say the studious mentality and um, being from a city like Philadelphia, you, you're a blue collar city. We're very hard workers. We don't give up very easily. And so when I moved to New York, I brought that same mentality to New York City just to, you know, not make any excuses for, you know, if I'm not from the area or just, you know, any background that I have, just make any excuses and just learn as much as I can and um, just, and elevate myself as much as possible. Okay. Yep. So let me ask you, so you um Giants or Eagles? I'm an Eagles. Fan. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm yes, all right, all right. So definitely. You're looking pretty good. Uh, yeah. Look pretty good last year and I'm nervous. I'm, uh, I'm yeah, nervous yeah. for this year. Yeah. You guys are looking <laughs> better. Yeah. Out of the yeah. top team in the conference, hopefully. Not, yeah. not gonna wood. Yeah, that's the, that's what they're projecting. Yeah, so. definitely. <laughs> all right. And so now so we're we're um fast forward, what what was your, you know, ten years in the business and what what is your what are your numbers? What's your business kinda look like now? Like how many units, how much volume? Um, I would say like on average, my volume is like around 20 to 25 million on average. I okay. can do a lot better. You know, I mean, I say that's great and I say that's bad numbers, but I think I can just push myself a lot more. Um, I'm all, I am in New York city. So the units can be on the lower side. Right. Can have but higher you, end. Yeah. Right. 
So some yeah, one of my best years I did uh, 127 transactions. That was between rentals and sales. Um, that was between 20 and 21. But on average, I do um, I would say on sales a year. On average, maybe like 19 sales a year. Okay. But that's New York City. Yeah, so it's a lot higher. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of like the rentals that I represent owners for. It. Um, so that's a lot of my business also. Okay, yeah. and so. So we're doing, you know, 20 units on average. You yep. did as many as 127. Yeah. Uh, and then you, uh, and we're looking at a, about a million and a half price point. You're doing 25 million. Yeah. That's um, that's a lot of real estate. Now, was it, was it, I mean, was it always, did you do that in year one? No. Four no, down, no, team? My, no, my first year, I, it was my, one of my hardest years. I didn't hardly make any money my first year. Um, I, my, I think that had me with like two or three transactions and that was helping my principal broker at the time with his listings. Okay. Um, and then there's learning, there's networking is big for me. I don't mind going to networking events. I don't mind going to broker events. I don't mind being uncomfortable in certain settings to get to meet new people. Meet people who are not from my background or not from, you know, the city or suburbs. It doesn't matter to me. As long as you're a person, I can get along with you. I can network with you. That's most important to me. And that helped me grow my business. So I meet people wherever they are. Um, I'll go to certain neighborhoods. I don't have a, uh, a, any blighters on, I'm not, you know, not naive to an extent, but I definitely, definitely am not kind of close minded and that has helped my business elevate. Okay. Yeah. So year one, were you full-time with, uh, yes, I was start time. Okay. Yes. Full-time year one, two or three transactions, maybe, maybe not enough to put food on the table. I was, uh, not quite. I mean, not quite. Not no. quite. No. Okay. And then at what point between year one and now year two? 10, yep. were you like, when did it click? Like, man, this is, I, this is good. Well, after making it, you know, 87% of agents fail in this within two years, two or three years. So after making it past year two and three, um, and I'm like, okay, I definitely can last in this business. And I definitely coming from a family that does real estate. I knew, you know, not to expect to make money right away. And I knew that it's not going to be an easy process in the beginning. So I just had that mindset that I have to stick it out. And I would say probably about a year four, like four and a half, year three or four, I would say I start seeing a change, start getting more referrals, start being comfortable contacting owners, talking to people, um, just doing a lot more with my network. And I started to see my business grow. Okay. Yeah. Were there any times when you thought about um, maybe it's not for you? Yeah, I would say in 2017, I think that was my worst year since when I started. And at that point, that's when I kind of had that feeling like I don't want to do this anymore. Um, that I don't think real estate is for me. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm not like a, a salesy, salesy person, but I know what I do and I know it very well. But so I kind of got to feel like maybe real estate is not for me. Maybe I should just go to like a corporate world. But then I kind of had that mindset like, you know, I just, you can't quit. You have to keep doing what you want to do and keep pushing. And then um, I just practice more. Uh, listen to people who are higher or doing better than me, listen to their advice, try to take their advice and imp implement my own. And from there, I just started doing a lot better in my business. Uh, yeah, I'm in year 10, but it doesn't mean I know everything. And I'm, I'm not going to admit that I know everything because in, at that point, you're not being honest to yourself. You're not growing. So um, I would say that, yeah, 2017 was my worst year since I started. I just started trying to elevate from there. All right. And yeah. so, and that wasn't that long ago. So, you, so that's probably the halfway point. Yeah, that's halfway, 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 halfway point. Yeah, halfway point. Yeah, halfway point. You're thinking yeah. that, that maybe it's not for you. Yeah, you push through, and then and now you're doing very well. I could do yes. Yeah, we could do, well, better. do better. Yeah, yeah. you do better, but you're able to get some peanut butter with your job. Yes, yes, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe two loaves of bread, right, not yeah. one, and have to fold it. Right, right, okay, <laughs> right, yeah, okay, right. Yeah. Get rye, rye, yeah, right. yeah. right. exactly. So, um, you know, because sometimes, well. We know that sometimes that breakthrough happens yeah. right when it gets very, very hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're just, you know, and quitting is just on the other side. Yeah. But then also so is that victory. What was that, where, what was that moment, what, <clears throat> the turning point when you said you were thinking about going corporate, but then you, you knew you had it. Like, yeah. what was that moment, if you remember that? I just... My moment for me is just thinking about this history of real estate. You know, 2017, there wasn't a market crash. There wasn't a pandemic. There wasn't anything to really have me to reason not to keep going. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't really any excuses. I just had to look at myself and realize what am I doing wrong that I can be, that I can get better at. 
And I think that was more the turning point for me is just realizing, sitting down and thinking and writing, down, and writing down like why would I quit real estate? It gives me the freedom to kind of move around. I can meet different people. I could be sitting here with you that I couldn't even do any other industry. And so I kind of sat down and thought about, you know, the pros and cons and thought, okay, people can do sales in, in 2008, 2009 when the market was in the toilet. Or 2007. So what is, in 2017, what am I doing wrong and and why this is one of my worst years? And I just kind of sat there and thought, okay, Daryl, you have to do better. You have to figure out ways to generate more business. And um, that's kind of was a turning point for me. It's just like, I have no reason to quit. So you took ownership. Yeah, I took ownership. to responsibility took ownership. for ownership. you. Mm-hmm. You play sports? Uh, why not? In high school, I did, yep. What'd you play? Uh, mostly track track and field if i can feel from fifth grade to like graduate high school okay yeah. so track and track and field is well yeah. there's some there i mean i said i said it before i'll say it again yeah. um individual sports yeah. swimming track and field mm-hmm. wrestling tennis tennis golf <laughs> you all yeah mm-hmm. those sports tend to um not that other sports don't but individual sports tend to create a certain type of um ownership. certain type of ownership a certain type of character because you can't like when you're running what was your event what was your best event um, I did the two and a four and sometimes the 800 and those, uh, individual and the relay teams. Okay. Yep. All right. And you don't, um, and the two and the four, like, it's just like who, there's no one to blame, right? Right. I mean, you know, yeah. if you don't run if you don't, yeah, if you right. come in last place. Exactly. And that's all you can blame is yourself. Either you didn't try hard enough, you didn't practice, you didn't prepare mentally, physically is everything's on you. And that's kind of similar to real estate. What I look at, I mean, maybe not so physically, but you know, that helps as well. A healthy body, a healthy mind. Um, well, for me, it's just more mentally. Like I had to change my mindset mentally. Um, you know, maybe not spending much time watching TV or not going out as much. Getting back in this bunker down and focus on what I have to do to accomplish to get where I want to be. Okay. So when when you went back to the drawing board, what did, what was what were some of the first things you did? Um, some of the first things I did is kind of just be honest. I actually role played a lot in the mirror, talking to myself about different interactions I'll have with clients, whether it be a buyer, whether it be a seller. People are network and that's kind of just just different ways of how conversations can go and prepare myself more. That's the biggest part of real estate is talking to people um, and just being comfortable and just, just point out there knowing what you know about your business and how you can help people. And that's what I actually get a lot. Um, there's like just talking to myself and just saying, okay, Daryl, this is what you have to do. If you were in a situation, how would you handle this conversation? How would you handle this situation? How would you go about this? And then just being more comfortable in front of people um like sitting here like i would never usually do this probably five years ago i'd never probably sit here it wouldn't be comfortable um but just trying to get out of that comfort zone comfort zone for me and just thinking what's the worst that could happen i call an owner i call a buyer they could hang up the phone and said that's it i'm still alive i'm still breathing <laughs> or be right what, here or so, right whatever yell at that's it i just kind of got that mentality of like you know i can really don't doesn't really matter to me i'm just going to do what i have to do yep and that's kind of just changed my whole mindset Good stuff. Did you yeah. did you come up with? I mean, because role play, as we know from from training and yeah. from, from um, you know conferences and all that good stuff, is important. Yeah. Did you did you learn that, or is that something that you just said? Like, you're just trying different things. I, I I never like really had like coaching coaching, which is why I'm you know want to get more into that. Um, but I, I was really like you know um, with the book that everyone buys the uh, Gary Keller book, mm-hmm. and I was reading that, and then I was buying a lot of health book. Uh, uh, self-help books and just trying to just learn different ways and kind of interact with people. And you know, I kind of got ideas from that about role playing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. So, so take it back to the, um, I guess before real estate, cause I'm, I'm just, I don't, I'm going to guess your age, but I'm guessing that pretty much after college, you went straight. Yeah. To real estate. I'm, 30, that... I'm 30. I just started 34 in April. Yeah. So April you're first of this year. So, um, I graduated college in 2011. Um, and, I uh, moved straight from Philly to New York City. And then I was interviewed and I interviewed like, I, I'm very aggressive. So I went online and, interview, and LinkedIn, emailed all the recruiters. I didn't have to supply to places. I emailed recruiters and took initiative, which is probably why I, I'm doing pretty decent in real estate. Mm-hmm. So that's how I got interviews from that. I, was inter- I got interviews at Ernst & Young, American Express, um, Thomas & Reuters. It's by reaching out to my own people and not waiting people to come to me. And I got interviews that way, and then I just realized that I don't want to be co- in, in a corporate world. Yeah. So you never, never even started. We're doing interviews, but then did you, did you accept a position? No. Yeah, no. I was uh, working at Best Buy. To be honest, at that time, at, at that time, and then um, 
I met my principal broker and uh, I interviewed the company early in 2012. And then by the, that fall, I was starting the company while I was getting my real estate license. And so I never really like took a initiative to go anywhere else. I just got right into real estate. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you kind of knew and, and really, I guess, you know, some could say it was in your blood a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was grandparents in real estate here in Philly. So I was helping them with open houses when I was younger uh, and helping them with marketing. And I, so I knew what you have to do to be successful. I can't sit at home and twiddle my thumbs and wonder why nothing's happening and give an excuse that I have to be a, be a person to go get it and, 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 you know, and be an initiative, get things done. Yeah. How did they um, take the news when you when you told them that you were? They like it. it. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, it's, you know they can. I can talk with them about the market here, the market in New York, or this real estate in general, or that's you know something happens with clients, and that's the transactions in general. Now I kind of understand, and they like talking to me about it. Yeah. Were they nervous at first? No. When you first came out of school, they weren't putting any pressure on you to. Uh, I would say to an certain extent, you know, the safety net is getting is going to get a, a job. A corporate job and that's kind of what's taught in this in general in this you know minority communities like you know yeah we were talking about that right that's... follow the safety net mm. and um i don't know if that was their mindset no one ever told it to me but maybe you know it's probably deep down you know because it is moving to new york city is it very a lot of change a lot of change is it a city i don't know um you know I'm, I'm not from there so i don't really know the areas and then you know it can be scary getting into a business that you don't know um in a city in a city you don't know in the business that's not a salary business. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that's a, a little scary. Yeah, but yeah. I know they're another super problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely problem that. Yeah. So tell me tell me in that that twenty seventeen time mm -hmm. when you not twenty seventeen, twenty that's twenty twenty, twenty twenty one. When yeah. you had hundred twenty seven transactions in one year. Did you have help? Uh yeah, I mean I worked with a company at that time, uh, M and S it's a company in in, in uh, Brooklyn in Williamsburg. And, and so like, you know, it was kinda help position on certain projects and developments, but like every project I was on or even my own sales, I just kind of elevated. But I mean, yeah. help them do it. How did, how were you even able to serve 120? I kind of broke myself out. Well, that was the rentals and sales. Yeah, but I broke myself they're... out. And so I kind of took a break in last year. Uh, which okay. is why my numbers were as good as la last year. I kind of just took a break mentally. I was just kind of drained. Yeah, from 21. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in 2020 also, which is 2020 that was happening in the world. And, this, and that actually was pretty busy in New York City. Um, during that time, so I just kind of got myself drained mentally. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Of, that's a lot of transactions. Yeah, in person. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is why I'm glad because, like in 2017, I had no reason to quit, but I was thinking of that mindset. So when 2020 came around, I was thinking the world was going to end. You know, the market's crash. The market's crash, and I was buying hot property. But for me, I kept a positive mindset. Like, okay, okay, I can still get deals done. And from there, just everything just started getting. I just started elevating a lot more in my business. Um, getting more referrals and just keeping that mindset and not listening to the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's just been helping me a lot too. All right. yeah. What about um, what about um, friends and other family? Not your mm -hmm. not your grandparents, but other friends. Did were you getting more encouraging words, discouraging? I know we can get sometimes mixed reviews from our our friends and family on on. Um, no, my friends and family is supportive. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, no. No discouragement from anyone like that. No, I, I try to have people around me that, be honest, that, you know, are discouraging or have a negative mindset. I don't need to be around those kind of people. I love but, it. Yeah, most of my family or friends are very supportive. I don't. So you trim them out. Yeah, I trim them out. You don't need to have negativity in your life. You know, they're, they're draining enough. So I just kind of, so people like that kind of zone them out. All right, I keep a cordial relationship, but I don't have to, you know, interact with a little too much. I love that. This is it. I don't know. That's, that's, yeah. that's the way to go. That's how I am in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. And so what other um, exercises, because, you, you know, you talked about uh, some of the role play, um, mm -hmm. keeping out negative influences. Yeah. Um, what other things that you do either, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically um, to, to really be prepared and be your best version in that 2021 time? to um to be able to sustain that type of business yeah i think just having like a system in place of like for me what i have a, where i meet with a buyer or even a seller i kind of have the same process in place like i don't just try to wing wing it mm -hmm. like i have okay this is i meet a buyer they get referral to me or I meet them at open house or wherever or i just their lead from somewhere i just kind of have the same process about going about every single thing 
Yeah. And that has helped me before. I used to just wing it and just try to figure out, you know, how should I go about it, overthinking. Now I introduce to someone, this is what I'll do. I, you know, I'll email, this is kind of the questionnaire I'll have. This is what I'll email my buyer's guide or I'll email them my seller's guide. It, every single process will be the same. Um, that's kind of how I do it. Now I tweak it depending on who I'm speaking with or kind of get the feel from that person, but I kind of keep everything the same. And, and that's kind of helped my business and it's trying to have a like solid plan. And, you know, um, and it's staying organized. I'm very organized. Um, everything is like Google Calendar. Everything is in email, uh, is labeled in email, color coded. So I just keeping track of everything and this um, not getting off course has helped me a lot. Early in my career, I wasn't like that. I was just kind of just winging it in this. And, and I was thinking that, thinking that real estate more of a transaction and not more of like building rapport with people. And once I changed that, that thinking like this is, uh, people are spending the most money they're ever going to spend, um, or anything and treating people more of, you know, like a human not, it's not just a transaction. It's, it's their life decision <laughs> on real estate. And, you know, that's just changing that mindset has helped me a lot. Yeah. And you got the right mindset, you know, you're, you're exerting the discipline. So tell me where, where do you see your, I mean, last 10 years, where do you see the next 10 years with your, with respect to your business? Um, yeah, so in the next 10 years, I mean, I see myself just trying to elevate each year, just trying to get better. And, and like, a lot of that comes on me. Like, whatever the market does, the market's going to do. I can't worry about that. But um, people are always going to buy houses. People are always going to sell houses. And where, regardless of what the news may say, it's still going to happen. Politics, presence, none of that matters. Yeah, it may slow down to a certain extent, but that is not an excuse why things can't get done. Um, but I see myself just trying to elevate in the next 10 years and, um, and eventually there's more focusing on investing on my own and maybe not be as much on the brokerage side and just become more like a full-time investor. That's like my goal for the next 10 years. Okay. Transition you know? now. And, and yeah, and I found that, that the, um, the commissions fuel and feed the investments. Yeah. You're just taking that and then you're just pushing it over. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's my goal. That's my, uh, my dream in the next like 10 years or so. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So next 10 years, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to be making a shift kind of more on the investing side. Yeah. Um, yep. being the landlord or being the flipper or what yep. have you. All right. What, what, um, what would you say to, um, to the, the, you know, the viewer that is, um, you know, either in a business, starting a business, thinking about starting a business, um, and trying to say, well, I mean, because it'd be easy to, to from the outside and say, I mean, your grandparents were in real estate. Yeah. Um, you went to Penn State. Yep. Um, so you're smart. Yep. You're um, you're organized. You're you're an Android user. Yeah. You got I mean, you got everything yeah. there for you. Yep. Well, but but that's not me. How? What would you say to them in terms of how they can push through in a time that maybe where they may not see that path as clearly. Or their future maybe not as bright, but they don't want to give up on their dreams of business ownership or this particular business or starting the business. What would you say to them to help get them through? Yeah, I would say the main thing is for me, like help me a lot. I don't really worry about what someone else is doing. And I think that's the biggest issue today with people is that they focus on, oh, this person, they look like they're doing good. They're doing great. They've only been doing this for two years. Looks to be deceiving. I think just focus on what you, you, what you have in front of you. And that's being disciplined and being patient and that's sticking to your guns and don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Don't worry about someone's new car you see on Instagram or the vacation or their house. Don't worry about that because if you start thinking that way, you're going to think I have to get there within a year and you're not there. You're going to put too much pressure on yourself. Just focus on what you, what you are doing, focus on your business and how you get better at your craft, regardless if it's a restaurant, are you, are you selling, you know, open up a new business, a cafe or whatever. Just focus on, your end goal and don't worry about anyone else and that's how you can get better you have to you have to admit to yourself what your weaknesses are and like and then you have to work on that and just be patient like for me like i've thought about quitting real estate like a, a couple of times not just 2017 but it was the most time but you know it, when you when then when covid happened i thought like wow maybe real estate is not going to happen and you, you watch the news you know, new york city is this new york city is that but i'm like okay i get to get that noise out and just focus on what I want to accomplish and that's it. I don't care about any white noise and let's do what I have to do. And I think people just to be patient and just like be disciplined. Like you can miss going out one weekend or you can miss a show that's on Netflix. It's going to be on Netflix. You don't have to binge watch it at that time. If you got more important stuff to do, so this is staying focused and being disciplined and just 
and just thinking about what the future could look like. Yeah, it's going to be rough now, but no one, no one has had a business successful right off the ground. Like, you know, everyone sees a finished product, but they never see what people did in the beginning. Just you to look and see, you know, it's going to be a bumpy road, but at the end, it'll be worth it. Yeah, or even what they did yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, you no. Know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, because even now, you're, you're, I mean, yeah. you're successful, but it's, it's not like you, you're, you're not taking your foot off the gas and it doesn't sound like it. So no, you're, I mean, you're yeah. still pushing. Cause I'm still... not like where I want to be. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can at a level where I'm better than I was five years ago, but I'm not where I want to be personally. And I'm not, and I don't compare myself to other brokers or agents. I don't worry about what they're doing because then, you know, like you say, comparison to D for joy. I don't worry about what, what anyone else. I just try to see, okay, Daryl, you didn't do this. You didn't do this right. Or you just have to be focused on what I, what I'm doing. I can't worry about what X is doing, what Y is doing, what Z is doing. Cause that's not going to get me anywhere. Cause you're just going to be worrying about, oh, how did, how did they get that? How did they get this? You worry about the wrong things. It's worry about what you're not doing correctly or what you could do better. And that's the issue with, I think people with business in general. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. But comparison and comparison. Comparison, yeah. And social media is, is the worst devil. Yeah. Right. I, I don't lie. I, I kind of put a blocker on my social media. Like, okay. I have a limit on Instagram. It's like 45 minutes a day. And and because, like, you guys get laws and you're like, oh, wow, this person's going on vacation again. Oh, wow, they have a new car. Oh, wow, they sold this. I don't know how they did to get that. I don't know what they did. So I can't think about it. I like that. I actually, I mean, I'm we, we yeah. recently I just even found out about that for the kids. Yeah. Just really recently, like in the last 30 days, even found out about that, the yeah. limitations and that sort of thing. Yeah. But putting a, putting that on yourself to yeah. help with discipline. To be honest, like sometimes I delete Instagram like in the morning, it won't reinstall it until I like done, like I get home at night. Because like, you know, if I'm just, you just on the laptop, you're like, oh, let me scroll Instagram and just, you'll get lost. Like, damn, this 10 minutes passed. Right. I could be doing or 10 minutes, minutes or 40 minutes. Right. And then you look at the daily average, like, wow, I spent an hour on Instagram. That's an hour where I can be doing something to better myself and not just endlessly scroll and scroll and scroll. Or I could be learning like a new language <laughs> or something like that in an hour. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I, I actually, I delete it in the morning sometime and then I'll reinstall like in the evening. It takes like a second to reinstall. So, cause that's, I had to like get disciplined myself and not like get stuck in that loop. As I live. Yeah, you'll be stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you like to do outside of real estate? Um, food. <laughs> like I love food. <laughs> oh yeah. It's I love food. I like to travel. Um I like to hang out with my friends and you know, I like watching sports and you know, um all sports. I don't care what it is. This I like this competition. And then um yeah, and just being with family and friends, that's the most important. When when I have time. Yep. That's good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Let me I got a quote of the day and let me gonna see what we got. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't, so that you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. There are no saw that I know we've heard yeah. some versions of yeah. yeah. Versions yeah. Of that more. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's true. I mean, you know, not everyone can be an entrepreneur, and and not saying that people don't shouldn't go that route, but you know, it can be hard. It can be months or weeks, especially in real estate, where you might not make any money. Or you might not close any, like you might not even have a deal and contract or everything might just go wrong. And if you don't like have that mindset to, for yourself to say, okay, regardless of what happened, I have to keep pushing. And some people might just go to route and just be like, I can't do that. This can work wherever and just make my check and that's it. You know, and but I like the aspect of not having to av- ask anyone for a vacation or want to take off or want to do anything. But I just have to know that if I'm getting what I have to get done, I can do what I want. And that's what I'll have uh, that's what the most joy I have about entrepreneurship. Yeah, it's just, yeah, you know, it's just, it's not easy. It can be stressful at times, like, you know, mentally and physically, it can be like draining because you just sometimes you just worry in general because it's part of life and part of being a human. But you just get past that point and just try to keep pushing. Then you, you think about the end goal and about what you can accomplish. Yep. Good stuff. And that's really about it for me. Yeah, this is awesome. Let me know. If someone wanted to, you know, you, you're mostly, you said, in Manhattan, Brooklyn. Yep. If someone wanted to reach you to, you know, buy a house or, or sell a house or just ask a question, yeah, what's the best way to reach you? Um, you can email me or you can just text me my cell phone. That's the best way I can, I can get my number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one. Text me my cell phone. My number is uh, 267-234-4084. I don't mind just answering questions to people. I don't mind helping people. Especially, I love, like, helping people who are come from backgrounds. Like, I, I used to help out at a community outreach center in, in South Philly. Just helping people who are not from, you know, doesn't have a, a good education background 
or maybe from people who don't have a good household. I don't, I like helping people. Mm-hmm. And that's talking to them about, you know, different ways to think about like life or different ways to think about business and just try to help people to achieve what they want to achieve. So I don't mind asking people for questions. I don't care if people can call me or email me. I don't mind helping people because real estate is the key to um, long-term wealth in this country. And being a minority, we don't have access to that. So, and, you know, as you've already yourself, you just know that we not, we're not really taught that in our communities in general. So I like to just tell people and just tell them, you know, this is how we can go about it. This is what you can learn. Um, and, you know, use your time, maybe not social media. You have, uh, you know, you spend two hours online, you can, you can spend two hours reading or benefiting yourself. We live in a world that you have access to everything that you didn't have 15 years ago. You can go on Google, you find it like that. Right. Any questions you want to know, you can go like that. Maybe you should know what the Kardashians wear, wear. Maybe you should know what's happening in your community. And I think we don't have that in our communities. And so people want to ask questions about real estate or in general, I'm, I'm happy to talk with them. Good stuff. And share, share the phone number and share your email. My email is daryl.williams at compass.com. It's my, my first name is spelled D-A-R-R-E-L-L. And my cell phone is 267-234-4084. Okay. And now yep. daryl.williams at, at compass.com. Compass.com. Yep. Got it. And you're an awesome person. Yeah. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah.